Welcome back everyone, today we are going to be making a chemical called ethyl chloroacetate. Why are we making this strange chemical? Well, we are going to use it to make a useful building block in organic chemistry called chloroacetamide. To make the chloroacetamide, we are going to be using a chemical reaction called ammonolysis. The ester will react with ammonia to form chloroacetamide and ethanol. For this type of reaction, careful temperature control is needed. Ethanol and chloroacetic acid are needed for this esterification. Concentrated sulfuric acid will also be needed. Fortunately, my ethanol already contains 14.9% sulfuric acid, so we don't have to get into crime. 90 milliliters, which represents an excess of this ethanol, were used. Besides that, 94.5 grams of chloroacetic acid and the stirfish will be used. For own safety, gloves and safety goggles will be worn. Don't try this at home, the experiment will be conducted in a very well ventilated area. The chloroacetic acid will be weighed out first, but beforehand we have to deal with a more important subject. Without this fish, the reaction won't be smooth, so the steel fish was added to the small round bottom flask. In order to avoid having to do evil math, the scale was set to zero. This will be the coolest reagent in this preparation, and because I have never seen it with my own eyes, we are going to take a brief look at it. Chloroacetic acid looks white and crystalline. It smells faintly like acetic acid, but still somewhat different. Many of you have asked me why don't use a spatula when weighing out specific reagents. The answer is simple. I hate cleaning. And even without a spatula, I somehow managed to add the right amount. It's like magic. To keep everything legal, sulfuric acid was diluted to the legal limit before the ban. Ethanol is one of the alcohols I diluted it with and this ethanol sulfuric acid solution will be used today. About 90 milliliters of this solution were used. Even more might also be okay because we are already using an excess. Ethanol and chloroacetic acid react in an esterification reaction to form ethyl chloroacetate and water. The reaction proceeds faster at higher temperatures and therefore a reflex condenser should be used to keep the ethanol boiling hot. Sulfuric acid acts as a catalyst and it also drives the equilibrium to the right side because it is a dehydrating agent, meaning it likes to pull water towards itself. On your screen you can see the entire equation for today's reaction. To begin with the actual preparation, the flask was placed into the heating mantle, followed by setting up the reflux condenser. This is probably totally unnecessary, but the hose adapter was placed on top of the reflux condenser to limit the amount of moisture that could enter the flask. Because some of you have asked me, I showed you where I connected the reflux condenser and I'm reusing the same water over and over again. Heating and stirring were turned on and we had to wait for reflux to occur. It did not take long, after 10 minutes the ethanol started boiling. Ethanol boils, condenses on the water cooled glass coils of the reflux condenser, drips back down into the reaction flask and the cycle starts all over again. As ethanol has a boiling point of about 78 degrees Celsius, the temperature on the reaction flask is roughly the same. Here you can have another look at the equation if you want. The reaction itself is an equilibrium reaction and not a one-way reaction like in the picture, but you get the point. Throughout the reaction, the mixture looked exactly the same. It was a clear liquid without any solid crashing out, which was to be expected as the product is a liquid anyways. Once four hours had passed, the heating mantle was turned off, the stirfish was allowed to continue doing its job. This clear liquid contains leftover ethanol, chloroacetic acid, sulfuric acid and our product, ethyl chloroacetate. Before even attempting to purify it using a distillation, which would lead to a contaminated product, we will get rid of as many of the contaminants as possible beforehand. I actually planned to make the methanol ester of chloroacetic acid first, but the ethyl ester is less soluble in water. One water wash using 200 milliliters of ice cold distilled water and one using 100 milliliters were performed. The layer containing ethyl chloroacetate was the bottom one. The majority of contaminants simply dissolve in the water. Because there's no overpressure, I didn't even have to vent the funnel, but I simply swirled it around. The wastewater in the top layer was collected in a separate beaker to be disposed of properly. The product might still contain water, which we need to eliminate. Anhydrous calcium chloride was chosen as a drying agent. About 3 grams of it were added to the ester 
and the flask was swirled around. Next, a simple distillation will be performed to further increase the purity. On the left, you can see the heating mantle and the distillation flask, followed by a distillation bridge and this collection flask. You can also see the reason why I'm not wearing a lab coat, it's extremely hot outside. Heating and stirring were turned back on. We waited for the liquid to begin to boil. A beautiful vapor front climbed up the flask. At some point, the collection flasks were switched out, as the first portion that passed over might have been left over ethanol. The fraction coming over between 130 and 150 degrees Celsius was collected. It unfortunately still looked cloudy, but we will deal with this problem later on. When we reached 150 degrees Celsius, the heating mantle was turned off. The white solid left in the boiling flask might either be chloroacetic acid or calcium chloride. And there you go, beautiful ethyl chloroacetate. I wrote down the weight of the flask plus stopper beforehand. To determine the yields, we only have to weigh the flask. In the end, we collected 84.4 grams of ethyl chloroacetate. This corresponds to yields of about 68.9%. Anhydrous calcium chloride was used to get rid of the cloudiness. This worked. I decided not to transfer the product to a storage bottle, but to leave it in this one. It will be used very soon, so the hassle of printing a label and so on isn't really worth my time. And this is how you make ethyl chloroacetate. If you liked today's video, make sure to drop me a like. And if you don't want to miss out on further chemistry content like that, ensure to hit that subscribe button. I also have to thank all of my patrons because you allow me to film projects you might enjoy even more. If you are interested in becoming a patron too, make sure to check the link in the description. I'm working on finding a reliable method to showcase your patron names at the end of upcoming videos. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Until next time.